Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Conversations. My name is Inav Avni from Untangled Coaching, and with me today, Natalie Forrest. Hi, Natalie. So lovely to have you here. Yes, I'm happy to be here. I love the title, Healing Conversations. Thank you. I I, I felt it, it it was so... It felt so right to have that, and I'm so curious to to hear what what it is that you're bringing to the conversation today. Well, we shall see what we'll end up talking about, but healing for me is on the inside out, and so you know, as a I always say, a bilingual, transformational mentor, you know, I try to bring out what we have on the inside, because. We, I, I don't think we really are broken or anything. So, you know, uh, in the work that I do, especially with women, of course, we really go sort of back to our heart. And that's why I love to say, you know, you're, you're all brilliant. Everybody's brilliant. And whether you want to uh, say you return to yourself or you reconnect with yourself, that's what I love talking about. You know, in the books and in, in the talks in everything that I do because I think we've we've lost that connection and and I often say we've lost our spirituality whatever that means for us and when we get back to that when we identify what that is that's like the glue and so that's a long way around of all the things that I do but it's always about the individual person and we can only heal ourselves Others can assist, but we heal ourselves through conversations, through mm. conversations with mentors like yourself, through conversations with family members, through conversations with our spiritual environment, and of course, with ourselves. I hope that answered the question. I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful introduction. <laughs> and and it, it, I was just thinking about how true it is, because I... I feel it, I think, you know, a lot of my clients feel it, that that we lost something and we don't actually know what it is. We know that things used to be really nice or really well or really funny or good or easy, and it's not like that anymore. And we have no idea how to get back into that flow. And so I'm, I'm really, I like that you're addressing exactly that. And I, I was just, just to say, I was interested that you said that um, for you, you understand, you equal making the equation that this, when you feel this kind of loss, it's actually to do with your spirituality. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about how, how you made this conclusion. Well, um, I think we have been, in general, in general, we have been trained by society to love others more than ourselves, to put others before ourselves, and to believe in a separation. OK, we are separated from other people. We're separated from God, from our spiritual guides, from whatever you believe in. But it's always separate. It's like you need a translator. You need a go between. OK, um, and, and that goes for spirituality, but it also goes for for learning. Apparently, we can't learn ourselves. We always need a teacher. Um, and so since there's a separation we've really separated from ourselves and we see ourselves as different not just from everybody else but also in a negative way different from everybody else and in that um in that development in that evolution so to speak i think what happened is that we no longer believe who we are but we believe who others say that we are Right. So it's the idea, uh, you know, I think we've all seen that, 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 that image of a cat looking in the mirror and it sees a lion. Well, here it's different. I think for us humans, it's different. We're the lion and we see a little kitty cat. OK, and then we look at the kitty cat and we find everything wrong with it versus seeing the lioness and going, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a lioness. I can do whatever I want, which is what we used to do when we were kids. And so there, the separation has occurred. That means, and this is the long story, right? And that means we don't appreciate or love ourselves. When we don't appreciate or love ourselves, we can't really love anybody else. Therefore, 
what I have seen is we need to reconnect with ourselves. We need to love ourselves. And that to me is a part of spirituality because the way that I see the world and everything is we're one. We're one with everyone and everything. And in that, I'm also one with the universe, with God, with whatever I believe in. That spark, that brilliance is in me because that's how I was brought here. And I need to reconnect with that. And that's where the spiritual aspect comes in, which which can be simple. I mean, it can just be you having a tea with yourself or you looking at the flower outside. There are all these mm, labels <laughs> when it comes to spirituality. And I'm really trying to break all of them open and say, what is it for you? Mm -hmm. Spirituality means how do you connect with your own spirit and everything else around you. So I think that's that's the best way I can explain it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and so maybe we'll take a step backwards and see. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and you know, what, what, how did you discover that the connection with spirituality, and and what brought you to to where you are today? Yeah, that was a long journey, and I won't go through all the details. Um, I'm actually a trained historian. And um, I think it matters that I was born in Germany and I'm clear today, I'm actually a little colored. It's not makeup. I actually spent some time in the sun. It surprisingly turned out as a tan, but normally I'm pretty light, okay? And when I studied, I began to study US history, Russian history, uh, American stuff, all sorts of things. And I learned about the different cultures and the different ways that people behave. And I'm pointing out my skin color and all of that because my field is African-American history and Native American history, which does not, you know, right there we deal with labels, of course. And then I went to the U.S. and actually started teaching that and doing some other things over there. And on my journey in the U.S., um, I got married. A marriage didn't turn out so well. And at one point, my body told me, I mean, I was in so much pain. There were days when I couldn't move. And then I even went to an acupuncturist and I don't like needles. <laughs> and, and, but it would come back and I would like for sometimes for days, two, three days, I could not move. And that's when I said, okay, something is wrong. What is wrong? Because none of, it, none of what I tried really worked. And I realized that I was completely disconnected from who I used to be, who I was, who I am. And I started making a change. It was a very simple change. I got up half an hour early every morning. No, I'm not a morning person. I stay up until 1 a.m. But I started getting up earlier to just be with me. And I claimed that I would do yoga every morning. I didn't. <laughs> I did it some mornings. But I put my yoga mat out. I was there with my cat. I was there with me. Sometimes I had a coffee. Sometimes I did yoga. But I started setting up the day differently. And by that, I was listening. I was conversing with myself. And I started to remember that when I was a child, I could see things. I could say things that would scare the adults. You know, like, whoa, how can she know this? And I started reconnecting with that. And then I went out and I took some classes to rediscover some of my talents, some of my gifts, which we all have. Well, and then the marriage ended. And so, you know, it, it started going like that, but it all ended peacefully because I had found that inner love and that inner peace. And I'm very, very grateful for the marriage because that marriage provided me with certain things that I needed to reconnect with myself. And so I think self-love and gratitude for everything that happens that's the healing that, that, that I learned, plus what I learned in history, that people have patterns. That's why I talk about the hidden power of patterns. So we've got these patterns, and unless we identify the patterns and break them, history doesn't repeat itself. People do, because they are stuck. So we, I'm going to use your term, we untangle that, and we let them do different things and the easiest is by themselves valuing themselves like i now do 
And then you can bring that peace and that love to others without expectations, without feeling guilty. All of that just falls away. And that's how I got there. And that's what, I, what I've been working on providing others with because I know how liberating it is. And I, and I really agree with that. And it's it's so interesting because a lot of the time I speak with my clients and, and I hear this kind of desperation of mm -hmm. how do I make it happen? I know where I'm at. I have a vague idea of what I want. Mainly, I know what I don't want. So mm -hmm. I have an understanding of, of what I prefer instead, but I don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying, you know, I learned to value myself. That's, it, it sounds so desirable, but also... How how do you do that? So I like that you 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 know you're describing some of the steps that you're taking, like you know getting a chance to to spend some time with with yourselves and the conversations that you had with yourself, and also of course this appreciation and gratitude to everything that you've done in your journey. Mm -hmm. What in your opinion is the missing piece here? What what is something that you can tell or you know gift our listeners in in a sense of how what is uh, some of the steps that they can do to get closer to this self, you know, feeling valued, self-valued or, or self-care, self-love? I think, um, well, the most important part really is make time every day to be with yourself. It'll feel awkward in the beginning and it doesn't have to be a meditation. There are lots of labels about meditation, <laughs> but just spend time with yourself. Turn off the cell phone, no radio, no TV, just you. And I, I actually, I, I do have like a, a, a list where I ask people, you know, all the people that they are connected with, what did you learn from them? What did you teach them? And you begin to see some patterns. You see mm -hmm. some commonalities. And that can bring you back to then saying, okay, when I was a child, and I would jump up and down and I would think, oh, I'm the best thing. I'm super woman. I'm super man, whatever. Because we thought we were invincible. That's what we want to get back to. Okay. We can do that by then saying, okay, so what did I use to enjoy? Like what made me really smile from the inside out? That's step two, because we have to talk with ourselves. So in step two, you start thinking, okay, what, what can I do? Like, I used to draw. Well, you know, I'm 52 years old. Should I really be drawing? I can't draw. No, try it. And then you begin to um, make time and also rediscover some of your passions. Okay. And that's where the patterns help. And then you really want to, it's going to be the toughest part, reconnect from everybody else for a while. So, and, and connect <laughs> you want to you want to disconnect from anybody else you ever knew okay okay disconnect i uh, disconnect and um that's the tough part um i always use this example because i've done it um there are people that call us every single day or once a week at the same time right whether these are older parents or friends or they call us always at the same time and if we're really really honest we don't always want to talk to them because we've heard the stories. We don't really want to talk to them. We, we want to do something else, but we answer the phone. When we answer the phone, as an example, you know, or email, we answer the phone or we open the door and we're like, our energy goes down. We're not really listening. They can feel it. We can feel it, but we're pretending. Okay. Mm. So those are some of the people that we have in our life. They love us dearly. We love them. It's not that we don't love them. But in order to reconnect with you, you need to lovingly tell them and yourself that right now, you need time for you. And you will tell them lovingly, I think I need some time for myself. So when you call, I may not always answer. And they're like, okay, okay, of course, I love you, okay. And then they call you. <laughs> now the question is on you, right? <laughs> so if you pick up the phone, it's on you, not on them. But if you look at the phone, you go, no, I'm not answering, I'm not answering. Slowly but surely, you reconnect with yourself. You're no longer 
pleasing everybody else, but you're actually pleasing yourself. And that's part of the healing that is going on. And then when you do pick up the phone, then this is just one example, of course. When you do pick up the phone, it's because you actually want to hear what they have to say. And that connection then is healing for everybody because now you're listening and they can feel that you're listening. It's like, oh my gosh, we're actually having a conversation here mm -hmm. instead of both of us, you know, like not really listening. So I think that's a huge part. And it also goes in other aspects, you know, when you go out with friends, what restaurant do you go to? If they want to go to uh, a Chinese restaurant and you're not in the mood for Chinese, do you still go? And how will you feel when you go? <laughs> so yeah. it's these little steps where you really need to say, okay, I love you guys, but right now it's me time. And then you are responsible for taking that me time. When you come out of that me time slowly, you will know better who you are. And, you know, maybe you'll have a mentor, a coach during that process. Okay journaling during that process and having somebody to talk to can be important, but mm -hmm. not the ones who know, love and like you the way you are, because you're going to come out of that a little changed or readjusted to your true self. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And it, it, it resonates with me, of course. Uh, I, I definitely believe in, 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 I believe in patterns. And, and a lot of the time I, I say to someone, you know, to a client, for example, if they come and they say, oh, I had a fight with this person or I had a disagreement with my parents or something. And I, I always say, actually, even before it happened, you already know what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. You know that you're going to see them and for the first 20 minutes, everything is going to be wonderful. And then 20 minutes in, you all going back into your own old patterns and yeah. you basically reenact everything that has ever been happening before. Right. So how do you want to show up differently? Yes. But, but I, like, I like what you're saying about basically, you know, really listening to yourself and not going with the, I need to please other people and I need to follow their leads, but actually what do I want? And sometimes you might go to this Chinese restaurant because right. it would be more important to be with the friends rather than, you right. know, the type of restaurant, but, at least you have had that conversation with yourself to make sure that you are on top, that you know what is happening. Yeah. Well, and then yeah. like, like you also said, then you, you know, how do you want to show up? You need to take responsibility for it. So you decided to go to the restaurant. Don't complain yeah. about the food now. Right? It's like, you can't complain now. You made the decision. So now it's on you. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it is important to understand that there are lots of practices and, and I just want to, want to mention that um, a lot of people believe in affirmations and, and they can work. What I have recently found, because you also asked me for specific tips, is actually that aforementions for me personally work even better. And that's because we often have that little voice in our heads, right? It's like, Oh, yeah, I am not going to answer the phone. I am not going to answer the phone. I am happy. I am happy. And then you look at yourself and you're like, I am happy. No, not really. I'm not really happy. I'm, I'm happy. No, I'm not. When you, when you ask yourself like a positive question, okay, like what if or, or why am I so happy? It's a very different come from because now your brain, your heart, your soul are looking for solutions. Mm -hmm. They're no longer seeing obstacles, but solutions. So, you know, that has been like for me, even though everything else is working, obviously, as well. But that helped me sometimes to then uh, be even more peaceful in certain trigger situations and understand mm -hmm. that, you know, they're triggering me, but that actually means it's in me. Um, right. and, and since you mentioned, you know, that example, I had a client of mine mention earlier uh, last week. She was like, what can I do every time I see my mother? I know we're going to have an argument. Like, can you do something about how to get out of triggered people? And that's really it. It's not about the people. 
it's about yeah. what you just said as well, right? So how do you show up? How peaceful are you? And how steadfast are you? Mm. Trusting yourself. Yeah. I love that. But there's so many things that you've said already that I need to, <laughs> to I want to ask a little bit more about. So, <laughs> so where do I start? Uh, so, so for example, these questions that you've just mentioned, instead of saying, I am happy, mm -hmm. what makes you know, what am I happy about? And, and that resonates so much because it really does require a different part of your brain to, to get engaged in, in the question. And it also forces you to, to find the reasons. So basically, actually pulling you out of the story quite abruptly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. T tell me a little bit about that practice and, and what you found and, and, and any example that you can. Well, I didn't come up with it. I did not. Okay. Um, I was working fine. My brain was working well. Um, and then a, an acquaintance of mine in, in a transformational group that I'm in, um, you know, she said, you know, I really like this. I'm like, okay. Aforementioned, never heard this thing. It's Noah St. John. Um, and he's done this years ago, uh, plus some really other cool things. And um, he's always about filling in the void of, well, uh, affirmations work for some people, but not for all. I mean, how long are you going to sit there and say, I'm going to win the lottery? And you even do the action, right? Law of attraction, you even like fill out the lottery thing and, you know, you do everything and, and you're, you're listening, you're doing all the official steps, but it's not working. So then the question is, okay, why do you actually want to win the lottery? Okay, so you want to be rich. Okay. All right, so you want to be rich because you want to travel. So you go down this very well-known coaching idea of why, why, why. In the end, it is so much more helpful than you say, how come, as an example, how come I am so rich? Now that energy and the added activity is really there. You're not questioning it. You're just like, okay, what? How come I've got 20 clients this week? How come my cancer is subsiding? How is it possible? Or what did I do so that my arthritis is gone? Well, yeah, what did you do? That's, that's come on, <laughs> let's talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you're approaching it from that way, you are, as I said before, you're looking for solutions. And so that is a huge difference that you're actually looking and your all of your creativity comes out. And that energy that we always talk about when it comes to the law of attraction, that energy comes out. You're really imagining it. All of a sudden, it's no longer like a, a stoic vision board. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. How come I'm so happy? How come I'm so happy? Oh, I'm happy because I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I'm, I'm healthy because I'm doing this. So that really, and it has helped a lot of my clients recently as well. I say, you know, so how come you're getting uh, one of my clients, she was like negotiating a contract. And I said, okay, you're not sure how to approach this. It doesn't really matter. It's not a, it's not a matter of how much money you're going to get. It is like, how come you are getting the best contract in the world for this? She's like, okay. And now she started negotiating. Or a question like, what good comes out of this? As a horrible situation, okay, horrible is not a good word to use. So what good has come out of this? What good comes from you winning the lottery? Mm. Your brain functions differently. And I think it makes a lot of difference for those of us who are um, more creative or who may have a little more negative self-talk. Right. I really like that. Uh, another question I really I, I'm really curious about what you've mentioned earlier about the, the history part of, of what you do and and how do you what did you find about, about the, the the patterns in history of both the, the African American <laughs> and the Native American I'm really curious about that oh that is just you know in general people do what people do we're all being taught by our parents and so you know that was just the patterns that I saw more are general in people. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, yellow, purple, green, or whatever. You're being taught by your environment. And therefore, you're going to reenact those patterns until somebody comes and says, why? 
Um, and in that process, every experience, of course, needs to be valued. So I can't tell you that it didn't happen to you. It probably did, but maybe we can work on the interpretation. So, you know, we know that mm, there, there are patterns for Native Americans, you know, they are more the indigenous people. So they are connected more to the earth, um, Mother Earth, Gaia. They are more, uh, they, they are less um, prone to always look at the time and say, okay, I'm supposed to be here at six because they're like, but I'm communicating right now. Now, of course, these are also stereotypes, but those are patterns. And uh, a lot of those patterns have been broken because of society. Um, so those are more, when I talk about the patterns, it's more about humans in general. Um, you know, let's say a king, a king of a country. Okay. If he has been taught that uh, purple people are uh, less worthy, that king is going to always treat purple people as less worthy. And that, of course, then translates to regular people. If you've been taught that uh, uh, green people are dumb and it has been going through lots of generations, then when you see a green person, you're going to say they're dumb. Yeah. Okay. So those are the patterns and breaking through them especially on the big scale, is very, very difficult. Mm. Because you're pretty much telling people that they've been lied to. And nobody he likes to hear that you've been lied to by your parent, great-parent, great-great-parent, and so forth. So the bigger it gets, lied, the lied, it gets. Lied to is, a, is, a, is an interesting one, right? Because, I mean, this is all, it's our conditioning. It's all, yes. what we, we grew up with. It's people just don't know better they don't yeah. recognize even what what is actually coming through themselves right. and what is coming through their ancestral uh, line in yeah. society and all of that absolutely i mean it's um it, it's sort of like like when we're talking about history you know we find new stuff all the time we find out new aspects of history all the time but it takes five ten twenty years for historians or archaeologists to actually say, look what I found and what I think it is. Right. Because they know they're probably running in a lot of brick walls, you know, being a revolutionary, you know, you're like you're running into it because now you're saying, think about Galileo. All of a sudden he's saying, no, it's not like this. Well, what did he get for it? Yeah. He came out too quickly. With it. You know, that's what he probably learned. But those are things that happen. And when I use the term lying in this instance, that's how a person feels. Of course, they feel betrayed. A best yeah. example I, I always have is um, parents who stay together for the sake of their kids. Okay. Stay together, stay. They're not really happy. The kids know they're not really happy. Right. But they're staying together, staying together. Now, sometimes they may seem happy but you know in the evenings they live in different bedrooms and all of that and then the child goes to college moves out and the minute the child moves out the parents are like we're getting a divorce finally and the kid is like whoa for the last 25 years you said you're happily married what's going on and that is sort of you know on on it on an emotional level what we go through when we realize that what we've been taught for years may not be the truth. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, before we, <laughs> we're just gonna uh, finish very soon, but I wanna talk a little bit more about what you started with, which was actually mm -hmm. about learn or knowing how brilliant you are. Mm -hmm. So remind us what, what it is that, uh, how, how do you help people to recognize really how brilliant they are? Well, you reconnect really with yourself and, you know, do you know how brilliant you are is a very important question. It's almost like an affirmation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at yourself and say, do you know how brilliant you are? Your first reaction is going to say, no, I'm not brilliant. I've been taught not to be brilliant. Okay. What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are you teaching others? Those are really important questions because at the heart of the matter is that, yes, we're all unique, absolutely, but we're also all one. That means 
you are needed. And if you are needed, whether we say the, 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 the uncut diamond or something like that, I like to think about it as a puzzle. To me, life is a puzzle. And if we're all one, we're all part of the same puzzle. So which perfect puzzle piece are you? What brilliance do you bring to the puzzle of life? What is it? Mm. And in order to get there, we need to, you know, peel all the layers of the onion, take all of those clothing of the roles that we have ascribed to off. And we need to say, okay, who are you when there's nobody around and when it's just you? And a lot of people don't want to look at that because... That also means you have to start saying, what have I done? Who am I? And we've been taught not to necessarily like ourselves. And we worry that when we do reconnect with ourselves, that we're narcissistic, which we're not, because you are brilliant and you are needed. You are that perfect piece. So if you may have looked like this before, now society has done this to you. You no longer fit. So we need to like, get this out. And we do that with questions. We do that with journaling. Every person is different on what, how to get into what they have experienced. We all have experience. So why do we have them? How do they help us develop ourselves? So in, in, in the sessions that I work with individuals, um, they sometimes cry, or well, they often cry, because it's like an, an aha moment. It's like, oh my gosh, I never looked at it that way. We journal a lot. We talk a lot. And sometimes we meditate. Sometimes we clear things. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that we need to get rid of. And sometimes that's easier and sometimes it's not. Um, one of my clients said, you know, she felt like she was in the mud. And, and I threw her the lasso and pulled her out. And I think that's how it is. And then once you're out completely, you have that inner peace. And yes, if there's daily work. I still work on myself daily, right? But mm -hmm. you have that peace and you have the skills to go out and do it by yourself. Because now you know how important you are, how brilliant you are. And once you understand how brilliant you are, how needed you are, that's when you trust yourself that whatever happens, it happens for you and you can get through it. Mm -hmm. And now you show up very differently in the world. And you are going to fit into that puzzle perfectly, and you'll do your job in that puzzle. Did that answer really the question? <laughs> I don't know. I really, it, it, well, I think I really like it. I really like what you're saying that, uh, you know, and, and how you explain all of that. I always, I, I agree. I mean, I always tell people that we all, you know, we have every person we meet has a piece of our puzzle, and mm -hmm. vice versa. We, we really are connected. But I, I like the the intensity that you bring behind what you're saying because, <laughs> I mean, of course I say it in a really good way, because it really makes people, I think it feels like, I, I felt when you were saying that, that it really gives the permission to let go of all of these layers and layers and layers of conditioning and and just, you know, habitual thinking and habitual behaviors that is not something that we created for ourselves even, it's just something that we got slap with as soon as we arrived in this world yeah so yeah. daring to ask ourselves actually really and that's of course connecting with the self-value that we mentioned before mm -hmm. and the self-worth self and and learning to look at ourselves in a very different way very empowering i really like that yeah and yeah and i've been through that and and are there days when i still wake up and i i don't wake up every day just ready to go i don't because I'm human, right? <laughs> sometimes I'm tired when I get up. And sometimes, you know, something happens and I need to breathe and figure out why is this triggering me? What is going on? But I now am able to figure out what it was. And I journal in the morning and at night. You know, and it's a, it's a daily thing. It's a habit. It's a pattern. And it helps because you don't take it to bed with you. You don't wake up with it. You don't carry it wherever you go. You release it immediately. And I love that you use the word permission because that is a stumbling block for many people. They don't give themselves permission or they wait for somebody else to give them permission. Yeah. So those are, yeah, 
Powerful words. Powerful words. <laughs> and so, Terry, we're just about to, to finish now. Uh, do you have any message or anything that the you know people listening can take away with them? Just to, I mean, yeah, I I'm think I really, really yeah. No, I think I think um, you know the title that we chose for this. Do you know how brilliant you are? I would really like for people to understand, and I sort of said it before, that you are needed. Accept that. You are needed just the way that you are. You're not broken. You just need to get back to that inner shine, that inner brilliance. And so you are needed. Therefore, you need to make time for yourself and let that brilliance help the rest of the world. And I just want to, I, re I really like that because it's also, you know, my belief is that we are put on this world not to just, you know, look after ourselves, but actually to serve others. Yes. And when you come up with this question of, sorry, not question, but this statement that you are needed, it really helps people to, to move outside of themselves and look at the bigger picture, the, the rest of the world. What is, the, what is it that they are here to, to do? What is their purpose? You know, the other question would be, um, what are you not allowing the world to benefit from when you're hiding? Mm -hmm. very, very good question to ask. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful question. It's it's exactly that. You, you you feel that you you have a talent, you have something that you know you could share and that would be in, make so much difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And yet because you are insecure and because you are fe fearing of being judged or ridiculed and all of that, you are hiding that. And now here you are. You're not allowing the world to see your talents and, and to enjoy your, your strengths or whatever it is that you're bringing. So thank you very much for hiding it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And, and actually, you know, last thing I'll, I'll add to that, some, a similar question helped me years ago because I didn't like Twitter. You know, social media is not necessarily something I embrace. I mean, I'm on it every day, but I like the personal like you and I are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And so years ago, a friend who taught me about Twitter and social media um, said, you know, what if there is a person in Japan who needs your advice right now? I'm like, okay. Then I'm like, oh, shoot. I need to put some messages out that are going out consistently because you never know who needs it, who you're going to impact at what time. And it might not be today. It might be five years from today. But, yeah, you are needed the way you are. So don't hide it. Don't hide it. I think it's a perfect note to, to end on. And I loved all of this conversation so much. So many nuggets, so many really beautiful thoughts and, and ideas and things to, to really ponder over. Thank, thank you so much, Natalie, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. And I'll add the, the, um, the social links, of course, to the, to the chat so people can find out more about you, get in touch with you if they so wish. Uh, and again, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.